Welcome back. In this next screencast on user management and security, we are going to set up some basic security and define who is allowed to do what. This is picking up from the previous screencast, so make sure you've gone in and set up the basics you need in order to do the uh, testing we need to do and the um, having an example to work with. Uh, I have the brewery app open. If you haven't already, you should do file uh, save all. And then you should go ahead and commit your changes. Okay, so all right, so we've committed our changes. And now what we're going to do, we're going to go in to security for the project. By the way, if this, um, hang on, let me cancel this. If this isn't open, you click it open, you, you click on security. And what we want to do is set, actually, I already had security in place. You'll notice that when security is off, we don't have any um, security module down here, security uh, settings. But if I go in here, double click security, turn prototype demo on, which probably was off for you. But anyway, we want it on um, at this point. Um, we have a security settings showing up for every module. Uh, we don't need this for the app. We don't need App Store modules open. Okay, so double click on security again to go back here. And the first thing is we wanted to find some uh, user roles. So I'm going to add a new user called Brewer. This new user is um, is we have to put it at the global level because when someone is logging in, their account will be a brewer or user and administrator. Um, when it comes to administration module and these other things, we're going to treat the brewer as a user. It's only in my first module where we have our brewery stuff that they have special rights and privileges. So make sure that that's the only one checked. Now, once we've set up our three users, we want to go through and make sure their roles are set up in the right way. So if I, I have an administrator, they should have maximum access to everything, uh, which ironically they don't yet. So if I click edit on administrator and I click edit on their roles, you'll see that in the administration module, the administrator is treated as a user. That doesn't make sense. So let's make them an administrator. Um, they don't need any role in the Atlas UI resources. That's just a background thing. In system, they should be an administrator. And finally, in our module about beer, we don't have an administrator role. There, you're either a regular user or a brewer. So we want the administrator to have kind of the high-powered rights. So they're going to be a brewer. Now we uh, want to look at the brewer. The brewer in the administration module should be like a regular user. Uh, in the system module, the regular user, but they have these brewer powers in my first module. By the way, if you're wondering why you can check and uncheck multiple boxes, you could, um, we're going to set it up so a brewer can do anything a user can do, but you could have the brewer only do certain things, and you could say that they are both um, a brewer and a user, but we'll just uh, do it this way. And uh, finally, the... Uh, the user should be a user in all places. User, user, user. That's set up. Good. So we have our basic role set up. Um, the next thing we want to look at quickly is the administrator tab. This tab here allows you to have kind of a default user you can log in as. The, there's a catch-22. If your app allows you to set up users and you turn on security, how do you actually get logged in with the rights to do that? So when you're running locally, you can log in as MX admin with a password of one, uh, role of administrator. You can change any of this. I would leave this as administrator. You can change the username and password. This only works when you're running locally. Demo users. So we have a demo administrator with a role of administrator, demo user with role of user. We want to add a brewer. So we'll call them demo brewer. You can call them anything you want. We'll give them the role of brewer. Okay. The, the deal with these is we're going to see that we, we don't need to know the passwords here. We will check in and out of these users for demo purposes. Um, 
And these users will be available in the cloud as well. Anonymous users, we're going to turn that on in a future um, screencast, so let's not worry about that. And password policy lets you like define things about what's allowed for a password. Let's not worry about that for now. So we click OK. And now if we go to our navigation, we'll see that the um, automatically, uh, by default, all our pages that we, we created had uh, been assigned the role of user. So right now, a user can do anything. By the way, a brewer, because we only gave the brewer brewer role, we didn't also give them user role, can only do brewer things. They won't be able to do anything. And you'll notice user management, which is a special uh, ability to uh, review users, is only available to the administrator. Okay, so now, um, what we're going to want to do is change some of this access. By the way, if you get errors here um, that may be related to some page you've set up or something, usually those errors will go away when we go into the, um, the next thing we're going to do. So we go to the security options for my first module and we want to click on page access and we'll notice right now the user can do anything the brewer can do nothing let's go ahead and say first of all the brewer can do everything and then the next thing we want to do is decide which things is the user not allowed to do so we'll say that the user is for um and, and you don't have to do both venue and style, but since I have them both, I'm going to just use them as an example. The user is allowed to, um, in, on the uh, beer page, they can do anything they want with styles, but they do not get access on the menu to viewing and editing styles. With venues, they should be able to see the venues, which is venue list, but they should not have an option to edit the venues. Um, you'll... Uh, you may be thinking, well, maybe they should be able to see the detailed information on the venue page. There are more advanced ways to do this, but for right now, I'm saying certain things the user can't do. Okay, so we've set that up. Um, we didn't. We haven't even talked about Nanoflows, so there shouldn't be any for Microflows, um, which were about our, our guessing game from another screencast. You would like to allow the brewer to play that game. Click OK. And now you'll notice that our nav is updated, and you see that when it comes to styles, uh, only the uh, administrator and brewer, who both have the brewer role in our in our um, module here, can can do that. Okay, so we've set all that up. Uh, what we want to do now is try running our app. Um, we'll go go ahead and run locally. If you got a message to update the database, then you should certainly do that. Otherwise, as soon as you get the option to view, view, note that we're prompted to log in now. It's not going to let us get into the app without a login because we've turned on security. Um, here is where you want to use that MX admin because unless somehow you already have an account set up locally, which we haven't done, you're going to uh, need a way to log in. So we log in. And now you'll see that we have a whole bunch of options here, right? So as an admin, we can we can view the beers. Um, we can view styles. I haven't added any styles. I did add in an experiment previously Bud Light. If you need to, you can add a beer, beer name, um, uh, Rolling Rock, product ID. I don't know why we had these, but they're here. We don't have any styles yet. Um, Rolling Rock, $2, we save. We can go to Styles. We can add a style, Pilsner. Okay, we can now go back to beer. We can say that Rolling Rock is a kind of Pilsner. Save. Okay, so we, we've got that set up. Uh, for venues, we can add a venue. Um, Joe's Pizza. One, two, three, Main, Chestnut Hill, Mass, 02467. Okay, it's added. We can save that. Okay, and now um, 
this is our number guessing game, we can go to users and we can see, uh, I guess I had previously added myself as an administrator, so apparently I do have a password, but this is a way to add new local users. Um, if I click here, I can put in a user, their, their role and so forth, uh, which is pretty useful. Uh, the demo users will automatically go up into the cloud, but um, these local users won't. So if you wanted to use this facility in the cloud, you'd have to log back in and do it. Um, you'll notice that the style of this page is different. Let me click home to get back here. Uh, what I want to show you is that once you have these demo users, I can do something like, let me be a regular user. If I'm a regular user, I'm logged in in that role, you'll notice that I have the beer option. I can actually look at details. I can actually change the style so I can edit things. Um, but I don't even have the style option listed. When it comes to venues, ironically, I'm able to delete a venue, but I'm not able to um, actually see details. So if you wanted to um, prevent delete, there's an advanced kind of security where you could do that. The other thing is you could put, um, maybe move the delete button to another page or microflow, but the easiest way to deny the ability to delete things is to actually turn off that right, and that will be in a more advanced screencast. Okay, so what we have now is pretty good. We have roles, not perfect as you can see, but we have roles. Um, we, can, we can be a brewer, right? As a brewer, we have the styles, but notice we don't have the user role. All good. The issue that we run into now that makes things a little tough is if I go into the cloud and run this, if I were to do that, I would discover that um, I'm prompted to log in, but the MX admin password doesn't work. Um, so we will uh, talk about some, some ways to deal with that. One way I'll mention right now is you could run the app um, with, with uh, security turned off, push it to the cloud. You would then have access to everything without a login, including you'd have, because you have security off, you'd be able to go in in the cloud, add yourself as a user, give yourself administrative rights, then go back to your app, turn security back on, push in the cloud, and now when you're prompted to log in, you have a user that you set up. It's a little bit intricate. I'm going to show you in the next screencast a better way to deal with that.